hiya welcome to today's video i hadn't planned to film anything but something arrived today it feels too fancy for me just to open to myself a little bit too indulgent so we are doing an unboxing today and it's from well it's from golan and i haven't opened this i haven't gone and done anything to it at all it's completely untouched so i'm a bit nervous about it so i ended up buying a fragrance that i sampled only only a few days ago it launched when they repackaged all their bottles so they are very expensive these bottles but i had a discount that i had back last year i didn't take advantage of so i put it towards this fragrance still expensive but i'm much happier to spend less so here we have the presentation both with Guerlain and anything i bought from dior they both have this very luxurious approach doesn't matter how small the item you buy It'll always be the same regardless of whether you spend £20 or 200 So it's a very fancy, luxurious um, packaging, of course, with the beautiful Guerlain emblem B. So let's open this up. And I love these boxes. I've bought three items now from Guerlain, so I've got three of these boxes, and I always keep them and use them because they're just they're too fancy. Why would you throw it away? So we have a few items at the top. So we have a fancy dedication about the materials used at Golan for their Art Le Art Le Matière collection. Fancy paper, packaging details. So the outer tissue paper, of course, is sealed with the emblem sticker. That is a standard thing. Again, that's, you always expect that. It's very nicely done. So we have the perfume here and we have some extras that are really nicely bagged up in this kind of soft muslin kind of um, material. Nice fancy little bags, and no plastic. Let's start with the smaller items and work our way up. So what we have in here is some samples, and we have actually a really nice little item they said they were gonna send. Um, what they sent me? Stuff. <laughs> Sample of Mangalan, not one of my fragrances that I enjoy, so I'll give this probably to my sister because she, I think she likes that one. What I'm really excited about is this little mini of Spiritus de Blivigny. Never tried this one, never tried this fragrance, so this is going to be interesting. It certainly gets a lot of hype, known to be one of the best vanillas around. So will it live up to its name? I don't know. I'll be able to a little quick sniff. So this is like a mini version of those very expensive bottles. So how cute is that? Is it a sprayer? Probably not. Is it? How do you get this off? Oh, hang on. How do you get it off? Won't come off. It literally won't come off. Oh, it's a screw top. Okay, this is a screw cap. <laughs> you have to screw it. Oh, that sounds wrong. I'm not getting anything off the top. It smells something vanilla-y, but it's nothing that's strong coming off the top. Anyway, let's just screw that back on again. I get the really... Oh, I can smell vanilla. Oh, it's wafting around. Oh, that is quite rich, isn't it? Okay, I'm just really excited to get into the main event here, so let's just go for it. What did I buy? I bought Rose Cherie. Of course, it was going to be their rose fragrance. So... This is it. This is the new packaging. It's it is more simple, but it feels nice. It's like a textured um, cardboard, really soft textured cardboard with a little emblem, the um, little plastic stickers there for security. I'm gonna get straight in and remove those. Ah, damn. That's a bit rubbish. Let's just use stickers that don't actually tear. So I must confess that I haven't been that excited about these bottles because I love the original bottles. I love those slender, rectangular, sleek, long, just demure bottles. And these never really excited me. Once I started seeing people opening their bottles and showing them on eBay, eBay, showing them on YouTube, I didn't think they were that exciting. This is actually really pretty. The cut of the glass reflects every little twinkle of light more in life than it does on the camera you can customize your bottle with the color of the top the color of the cord and the color of the little tag you can also get your bottle engraved which i have done i've just seen it. it's at the back it's very 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 subtle 
What I've decided to do with Rose Cherie was go for the pink, the lovely pink. I didn't want to go for the pink cord. I don't like pink too much. And then this really beautiful soft pink at the top. I think the black looks more classy. And I think the touch of gold just brings out another another color, you know, another facet, which I really think is really beautiful. What I decided to have at the back, and there's that lovely bee. It's really bougie, I hope you can see that, but I had Lady Jones written, engraved into the back. My husband calls me Lady Jones, a married name is Jones. And he'll occasionally refer to me as Lady Jones. It's cute, and I just thought it'd be nice on the back of this bowl. So this is my Lady Jones. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. Lady Jones. I'm fond of the older bowls because of how straightforward, simple, slender, classy they look. This is a bit more fussy, but it's heavy, it feels nice. I love the bee emblem at the back. I'm not a massive fan of the caps. Are they magnetised? No, they're not magnetised, it doesn't really matter. They're just a plasticky cap. There's a little bit of weight to them. I like that you can personalise the, the colour, the swatch sort of uh, plaque at the top here. There was quite a few options with that one. And you also, you've got options where you can pay a lot more money and have diamond encrusted or the, the bee emblem is beautiful. I would love to have had that, but that was an extra 150 pounds, I think. So we, we, no, no way, no way. But the pink is really pretty. Let's talk about the fragrance. So this is a very pretty rose violet ethereal light scent. Let's give this another spray because it opens up quite fruity and quite quite bright and I really do like the opening. I think there was something like lychee, maybe even pear, something delicate, um, sweet but not too sweet, not too juicy, something very delicate like a lychee. I'm getting something like that in the opening and it's just that first blast but it remains so pretty and soft. What this is to me is a beautiful blend of delicate pretty pink rose and very delicate violet. I find that rose and violet can end up smelling a little bit cosmetic-y and not in a not a great way every time. I've tried one called the Rose from Musicology, and there's a quality within that, that fragrance that smells a bit like nappies, baby wipes, nappies, and that isn't exactly something you want to smell of. And that is my experience so far of a very strong rose and violet. I have also tried lipstick rose from Frederick Mal, and I found that to be very strong, very sickly somehow, a bit dirty, perhaps not animalic so much, but there's something very dirty in that scent. It is lipsticky, but it's as though the lipsticks dropped in dust and maybe nappies and baby wipes, and it, there's something heavy about it. I never found that particularly appealing. There's a quality in both of those fragrances that were pretty. This scent is the pretty aspect of rose and violet without having anything dirty around it, anything weighing it down, anything making it waxy or too musky. There is a musk and I do get some of that musk in the mid. The musk goes a little bit um, scratchy in my nose, only very slightly. Overall, it's this fluid, pale pink. It's the color of this juice, pale pink, slightly powdery cosmetically scented rose and violet is so pretty as it dries down i start to get a lot more presence of almond powder and i think it's a beautiful addition as it comes through it comes through quite a lot on my skin which i'm pleased about that kind of touch of angelic almond powder just gives it this ethereal quality it gives it this very soft base whatever you may consider the archetype of femininity to actually be for me it's rose cherie so that soft kind of puff of this cosmetic-y, almondy, rosy violet can have a touch of that baby wipe style, just a hint of that. But I think that almondy, heliotropy, powdery, soft powder brings it back away from going in that direction. I guess it's fitting that I've had Lady Jones put on the back because I feel like this scent suits a lady, a lady of the manor, a lady who is graceful and wears pastel shades of pink or blue or, or grey maybe paints watercolour pictures, grows all of her own roses and has them in shabby chic rustic jugs all around the manor. She's a lady that is wealthy but not bougie. She's classy, romantic and wears rose cherie. Obviously I'm still quite new to the scent um, so it's not a full, a full, you know, experienced wear. But those are my thoughts on the fragrance so far and I'm really enjoying it and I'm just so happy to have this style of rose violet cosmetic -y 
beautiful angelic powdery fragrance in my collection thanks for watching guys take care i'll see you on the next one over and out